Hello and we're finishing off the Hallowell Canes talk now. Apologies for the delay in getting this done, being a bit busy. And as much as I like seeing people cry and stress, I haven't been ignoring the comments on purpose. For some reason the college computers weren't loading them up. They're temporary internet files, but should all be sorted now so I can reply to you. Anyway, so we covered nucleophilic substitution and elimination last time. So the other main, me well, you don't need to know the mechanism, but the other main sort of um, reactions, what you need to know for the haloalkanes is free radical substitution. So the free radicals, why you need to look at this, it's to do with the CFCs. So carbon fluoro, sorry, chlorofluorocarbons, um, why they were banned, some of the applications of them, things like that. So they are literally like this, just some chlorines and fluorines attached to a, an organic carbon chain. So these were brilliant in terms of fire extinguishers, put it out nice and dirt cheap, they used in aerosols, refrigerants, all of that jazz. But they were banned because, as we'll see, they majorly screw up the ozone. The reason why they do that is they, these bonds here aren't particularly strong. So when you shine UV light at them, they will break. Now I'll show the actual arrows here, but as I said, you don't need to do this. So this is what's called homolytic cleavage. So the two electrons in this covalent bond, they break in the same way. So homo, same, cleavage, break. Yes, 16, 17 year old boys love that word, cleavage, girl boobs, hee hee. So there we go, we have some free radicals generated. So when you see this single dot on things, that is a free radical. It is a single unpaired electron. So I've said some rather sexist things in the past, I'll not repeat them on video in case somebody with authority watches. But these want to pair up with things. Very reactive will tear the life out of anything they meet. So we'll go through a full series of the actual equations now. Typically you'll probably meet chlorine, although some of the equations in the exams do work with bromine as well. So the chlorine element, the halogens, is floating about nice and happy. You shine some UV light at it. So we need UV to actually kick this off. This is why they'll be kept in dark jars and dark rooms to keep them away from sunlight and as we mentioned with the halogen topic why chlorine sort of um, needs to be topped up in outdoor swimming pools the UV light will be getting rid of some of this along with it reacting with the microorganisms as well so UV light and it breaks up so notice here the halogen Cl2 here we've got two separate chlorine atoms floating about, or two chlorine-free radicals. This is what's called an initiation step. So initiation, initiate, to begin. So we start with no free radicals, we make some, we've created them. Now these free radicals, as I said, anything that's nearby, they will react with it like crazy. So we'll say it bumps into some methane. So the chlorine free radical bumps into methane. What it's going to do is it's going to tear one of these hydrogens off. It wants to bond with things. I'll show you the mechanism, what's actually happening. I'm just going to do sticks. So two electrons in this bond, one will go back to the carbon, notice here I'm using hook arrows. So when you've done your mechanisms for the nucleophilic substitution, it'll be double headed arrow, two electrons, these are the movement of single electrons. Now the plus is getting a bit in the way there, I'll just remove it. So the hydrogen takes its electron, the chlorine takes its electrons, they come together, you've now got two electrons, so that's going to form a covalent bond between the hydrogen and the chlorine free radical. But obviously the carbon here, 
is going to become a free radical now. So know what to say, always remember your dot. If you forget these, you will not get a mark. You will be penalised, lose it for the entire equation. On some of the, the longer molecules as well, they do accept the dot just being put at the end of them. However, I would learn where it's actually going on the compound. So this is a first propagation step. So the propagation steps, these are the chain reaction parts of it. So a chain reaction, it regenerates itself. So what will happen now, this CH3 free radical, it will find another chlorine and it will react with it. So it's going to tear this molecule apart. So you'll notice the radical what got used up here, we've regenerated across here. So your propagation step will always come in pairs, in two sets, where the radical what you've created will react with something to recreate the one that got used up. As I said, this is a chain reaction. The way you know this is if you look here and here, here and here, We've got them on both sides, it would cancel out. All you've effectively seen is the methane react with chlorine to give you the chloromethane and HCl. You'll notice probably a few of you, maybe a penny is starting to drop with that when we come to look at writing just the overall balanced equation. So the propagation step should be in two. You start with a radical, you create another radical. Start with a radical, create a radical. So the final bit is a termination step. Termination, terminate, finish. So in the termination step, there can be many. Anytime two free radicals meet, obviously one electron, one electron, they will come together, form a covalent bond, and that's it. They cancel each other out. So you can get many different termination steps. The question will typically tell you what to produce, or to say, give any valid termination step. Much easier if it's the latter. So we'll say I want to produce chloromethane. Nice and easy as we go along. So to produce that, I want a methyl free radical and a chlorine free radical. Stick them together, and I've now produced what I wanted and a termination step. So as I said, it could do many different things. We could produce ethane from this. There we go. Two methyl free radicals come together, ethane formed. Um, I would be a bit careful in exams with things like this as well. Sometimes if it was asking you, say, ethyl free radical plus ethyl free radical to give you butane, they do sometimes penalise if you use molecular formula. If you'd written C2H6, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Play it safe, don't do it. So always actually write it out. Similar up here as well, write them out in full, show where the dot is correctly. Right, so I'll do another one just with a longer compound, just to get the hang of it. So we'll say bromine this time, exactly the same thing. Shine UV light at it, breaks up into the bromine free radicals. Now we'll say bromine reacting with propane. Now in terms of which hydrogen to take, any, more or less you have to look at the product, look at what it's wanting you to get towards. This free radical, very reactive, can take any of them no problem. 
So we'll say at the end I want to produce two bromopropane. So I'm going to pull off that middle one. Again, set, so we've got an initiation, we've got one propagation, we need another propagation. We need to regenerate this radical. So you'll notice very easily, it's always typically just reacting with the, the halogen which you started with up here, just to break it apart and obviously one radical comes off another radical which combines with this radical to cancel out. There we go. So now your termination step go. So two bromopropane produced there nicely. In terms of if a question asks you to write an overall balanced equation, it's actually much easier than it appears. That's why you'll probably only say it's typically one mark at most. As I said, it links in with the actual propagation steps. If you are good with seeing the different propagation steps which could take place, fair enough. You can visually imagine sort of cancelling out things which are on both sides. If you are not, there is a much easier way. So, suppose I tell you again, propane reacting with bromine, and I want you to produce 111 tribromopropane. So write the product first. There you go, so write that. And what else? You'll notice every time in the propagation steps, the bromine free radicals were pulling a hydrogen off the actual hydrocarbon chain. So we're going to get some HBRs. Now, you'll notice, three hydrogens were pulled off there, so we must have produced three HBRs. Now, finish balancing it. So, three bromines, three bromines, so six, so I need three Br2s, and there you go, done. An overall balanced equation for free radical substitution, bromine on propane. Now the other bit which you need to know is ozone depletion, so the actual equations for it. So usually you don't need to show that, you just need to show how these chlorine free radicals break down ozone. So ozone, O3, the nice protective layer around the earth which stops most of the sun's harmful UV rays actually getting to us and cooking us like fried chicken. So the way it breaks it down, it breaks it down into oxygen instead. So there's your first propagation step. Now this reactive can bump into some more ozone. Again, it's going to regenerate the chlorine free radical which got used up and produce more oxygen. So in terms of writing, as we said just before, about the balanced overall equations, you will notice same set, well, on opposite sides can cancel each other out. Chlorines can cancel each other out. So your overall equation, two ozone molecules are broken down into three oxygen molecules. That's why CFCs were banned. 
otherwise they would just eat the entire ozone layer. Um, only other point to make, every time you are doing these, the CFCs, since a lot of them will have fluorine in it, fluorine, capital F, just F, not FL, that will cost you a mark, and not a small F, that will cost you a mark, capital F for fluorine. Bit of a side note, just for your own curiosity and interest and general awareness of the world, the guy who was one of the first to make these, Thomas Midgley Jr., he was also the guy that put lead in petrols. He's rated as the person who's had the most damage to the environment in history. Bit of an amusing fact. With all that, there is the Howell Keynes topic done.